My name is Dr. Deborah Prince Zinni, and um, I am the Deputy Laboratory Director here at the DPAA Laboratory. DPAA was established in 2015. However, uh, we have a very long history of our predecessor organizations such as JPAC, SILHI, and really going back to the laboratory itself has a long history going back to right after all of the wars. Um, a SIL, or Central Identification Laboratory, was established after each one to account for uh, the missing and to try to identify those individuals that sacrifice for our country. So the mission of the DPAA is to provide the fullest possible accounting of our service members from past wars to the family and the nation. We uh, are currently wrapping up as we come up on the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, um, an identification project that was um, dedicated to identifying remains from um, sailors and Marines from the USS Oklahoma. So this was a very um, long project in the making. Um, so this is um, something that we originally started in 2003 with the first casket associated with USS Oklahoma um, that we exhumed and did some DNA testing and even just some anthropological methods. We knew um, right then that the remains were highly commingled, meaning that there was more than one person represented uh, but to the extent of commingling really wasn't um, realized until the DNA results came in. And there were over 90 um, individuals represented in that one casket. So if you think about it, there were 429 individuals on, the, on that ship. Um, several of them were, were identified right after the war, within the few years afterwards. So we knew that this project, we needed to have all of the remains here in the laboratory in order to do it properly. And that took a lot of extensive research as well as collaborations with a lot of different agencies. So we worked with the, um, with the Navy, we worked with the service casualty offices, um, Veterans Affairs, um, the, the VA, um, the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific where all of the remains were, were in, interred. Um, and it took a long time to get all the permissions and also the, the dental records needed, the family reference samples was a really key piece. And that was working with the families in order for them to, to, to donate their DNA so that we can compare it to the service members that we were trying to identify. For the USS Oklahoma up to now, we've identified um, 353 sets of remains associated with the USS Oklahoma. Uh, we're also working on several other um, ships out of Pearl Harbor, the USS um, California and the West Virginia as well that uh, we've made um, a handful of IDs, so about 15 together with that pro those two projects, as well as um, there's also been the USS Curtis and the Pennsylvania and the Utah that we've made a couple of IDs from. Right now, with the, the number of missing from World War II, we're, it's approximately 72,000 that are still missing from World War II, um, which is a really large number. Um, with that, a lot of those individuals were lost at sea. So when we look at kind of, you know, that 72,000 number, uh, when we're looking about how many we really think we can recover, because we do have some underwater excavations that we do um, in shallow water. We are doing a few that are in some deep water, um, but a lot of these losses were in very deep water over the ocean. Um, so we're looking probably about half of that number that we think are most likely recoverable from World War II. One of the most rewarding aspects is, I think, just, just being able to provide some answers. I know it's been a long time for these families. Um, and to, to finally get some, I don't think families actually ever get closure, but to get answers, I think, is really important. And to have their loved one home, um, to know where they are, and to have a, um, a grave site that they can go to, um, I think is really important for the families and that, that gives me a very humbling um, feeling and, and just a, a bit of pride that you can can provide that to, to a family. You know, they, they say the, the World War II generation is, is, is the greatest generation of all time. Seeing the sacrifice that these men made, you know, going, you know, to all of these foreign countries that we fought in during World War II. So across the globe. So we have remains from World War II that are all throughout Europe. We have them in, in Asia uh, and also across the, the South Pacific. I mean, they're, they really did go worldwide to, to help fight for the freedoms of not just our nation, but for others as well. And I think that's something that, that really needs to be honored. And, and we have that solemn obligation 
to those families to, to never forget. And I think coming up on this 80th anniversary, I think it's really important for, for people to remember that sacrifice that they made and that it is still very important.